children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. We are the vases. That is the reason of the word this morning. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 8. But now, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are potter, and all we are the work of your hand. The church may be seated. May the Lord bless his word. Brother in the Lord, God. He has used so many ways. One of them is the symbolization, the biblical symbols. For example, when I see in the Bible or in a spiritual gift talking about the gold the gold symbolizes the power of God when it talks about silver it talks about the redemption when it talks about bronze bronze is the justice of the Lord and the word talks about the wood and talks about means the man and talks about the sheep it is the servant and it talks about the goat it talks about the one that is not a servant and it talks about Zion the Lord is talking about eternity and in this passage, the clay, it talks about it talks about a man who is not the process of salvation. The vase, it talks about the one that has. And the potter is Jesus. So our objective here this morning is to talk about the process of making a vase. And connecting the process of salvation. And you'll see that there is a lot of things that are similar. So the first observation, when someone is going to make a vase, they need to get the clay and nature. And so he gets the clay in its natural form, how it is over there. And so the potter, what is it going to look for? Is the clay that he's looking for, is it already ready to be made into a vase? No. Because when he gets this clay and he brings it, to make a vase this clay is in its natural form and it's has many things that aren't supposed to be there it's a lot of impurities and these things cannot be in the clay and so if the brethren associates this with the process of salvation Jesus did this with us he went there in the world with a strong hand, that is the word. He took our lives from there, and I ask, did we come perfect, purified? No. We came with all our impurities. And what are the impurities that are in the clay? There's rocks. There's sand. 
and all these impurities are are typical of what we brought with ourselves that it was from our nature of man of the world that we understand now that we could never be uh, a vase of honor and so the potter when he brings his clay in its natural form he starts to take out all the impurities like this right here so that my servant can be a blessing I can I need to take this out of him Or can I take this out from her? From him? And that is what the Lord does. He is the one who purifies us. And the potter now took all the rocks and the sand. And I ask, can, this, can the clay already be a vase? No. Imagine here on top of the pulpit, this purified clay. And if I come here and have Andrew helping me too, and I blow on it, what will happen? It disappears. And so there's something here as a doctrine for us. We are particles. We can live and think that we can live alone. The word says that sin's the one that isolates themselves. So the brethren will see that in the next process of this, in the next phase of the process, you'll see that you'll not be a particle, but you'll be part of a togetherness. We are, when we are in the body, we are blessed by the Lord. So you can't have a, a particle alone. Any little wind, the particle goes away. So you need to add an element. What element is this? The water. And the water talks to us. It talks about the blessing of the Holy Spirit. And it is the Holy Spirit, this element, the water, that gets together with the particles. That is why we are here tonight, today, because we have only one Lord, and one Spirit, and one Pastor. And we are one bottle, one body. So you add the water now, and it makes so that the particles become together so now the clay is on top and I'm gonna say it even looks ugly yes or no yes before I accepted Jesus I was ugly Marcelo who you but now I'm beautiful because I have the brightness of the Holy Spirit. Glory to the Jesus. So that clay, without any form, it is something that is ugly. And I ask, so in the state that it is there, can it be made into a vase, yes or no? Not yet. It is necessary to continue the process. Now he began, began to form it with his hands. And you know what the intention is? Is it with your hands? You can identify that uh, if, if it is still just the clay, if there's anything else in the clay that shouldn't be there. The Lord has a blessing for you to today. But with that little rock, you can't. Are you understanding? 
The Lord has a blessing for you to be a worker, but with that little impurity, you can't. It is necessary for him to shape it so that after if there's something else there, it will be where the vase has a little crack. And so I always say, and the opportunities that God permits me, has God already shaped your life? So that you can think, what phase of this process are you in? The Lord showed that many of you are in the fire. Has the Lord shaped you? Are you clean of all impurities? So now can this be a vase? No. You can say it. So now you get this clay that is shaped, and where do you put it? You put it on the... You put it on the wheel, and so the wheel, it turns, and with your hands that is watery, you get the clay, which is ugly with no form, and you give it its shape so that so that a ship for what he wanted. <coughs> so it had no form and was ugly. That is not what. In that form, he shapes it in the way he wants. And that is what the Lord has done with us. And so on top of the wheel, the vase is there. And what had no form has form. And what was ugly is now beautiful. The vase is ready. And so I ask you. Can it be used? No. The brother wants to be a vase of blessings. Glory to God. But he needs to pass through these processes. And so when I talk about this, I remember a word that the Lord said that he would not give the brethren anything unless he is proved. Sometimes the Lord wants to give you many things, but sometimes you have to pass through the trials. You have to be proven. And when you are proven, you will receive the blessing and you'll value it. The vase now that has just been formed it, it goes through the first, cure, the first cure, which is the cure when it is in the sun. And so being cured by the sun is, talks about the first battles that the brethren who goes through the process and the Lord gives a blessing and shapes it and it passes it. And I passed it. When I, when I became a Christian, when I was in, when I was young, and I walked through the, my street, when I walked down my street with my Bible going to church, and my friends were, oh, you became Christian? Are you crazy? Come with us. Come do what we're doing. You're going to church? Are you dumb now? No, I became happy. You don't live anymore, and the family doesn't comprehend the decision that you took for being a vase. It is in the work. It's in school. Those are the first battles. And so now the potter, he does an, he does an inspection, and there is no cracks or anything. And so now, can the vase be used? Now? No, not yet. 
Now he'll be put in the fire. And this is what the Lord showed. Many vases in the fire. And what does the fire talk about? It talks about the great battles. The great problems. The ones that you say, Lord, I don't think I'm going to be able to get through this. The fights are... The problems are so big in my life. Lord, I don't think I can resist this. Have you been through these? Have you been through the fire? The Lord showed that there are people here that are in the fire. And I say it's in a resist. Trust in the Lord. Be firm. Stay in the prayer. Because the Lord will make you victorious. And you will get out of this fire. And the potter will see, this is my servant. Now, yes. Now, they can be used. They can be a vase of blessings. And the Lord uses their vases the way He wants. Some are pastors, some are workers, some are deacons, some take care of the flowers, some are teachers, in the group of praise, instrumentalists. The Lord uses their va his vases the way he wants. So, what phase of this process are you in? I know that the Lord showed us some are in the fire. Others, what phase are you in? It doesn't matter what we want. It doesn't matter if we want to be a vase of honor. We need to want to be a blessing in the Lord. A pastor Sabado will end our service. Amen.
Let's have a glorification to the Lord. Lord, at this time we glorify your name. We thank you for this word this morning that came in encounter with our hearts. You are the one that have helped us with your grace. We thank you that with your grace has been enough. And you are the ones that has sustained us. Nothing, O oh Lord, have you left. And every day, you have put more love in our lives for your work, O oh Lord. Because we know that every day we are being prepared to, not, to be with you in eternity. You are the one that is with us, that have, has cured us. Because we are nothing without you. And we can say that. And so here you have helped us. Because you have been our fortress, our safe place, and we can say that we are more than victorious. Praise be the name of the Lord. For everything you have done this morning, we know, O oh Lord, because you know you will continue doing these things. Because only you are Lord. Praise be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you for all the love you have given us, O oh Lord. We thank you for dedicating our lives. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you that we are here glorifying your holy name and dedicating our lives, O oh Lord. We thank you that we are here serving, O oh Lord. We know that we don't deserve this, but you, are, you give us your grace, Lord, and that is why we glorify in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord give a revelation for us to pray for the church because the Lord showed that He has already operated in the Word, has already blessed us. We just said that some of the brethren here, they have been asking something for the, from the Lord. It is the faith. Give us more faith. Dummy, my spare. Dummy, my spare.
Holy is the name of the Lord. Praise be the name of the Lord. My children. This is a proclamation of a feast of great happiness for you in my presence. For I've extended over us our good hands for my grace, my mercy, and I have blessed you in a profound I renew I renew your faith and I make you ready my servants for this walk my son secure and happy in our presence I have seen many of you in great battles you are not alone. Your Lord has been with every single one of you. Be faithful, somehow, and you will see the victory. You will see the blessing that I will concede to every one of you. In special, I have reserved this morning, beloved daughter, to talk to your heart. You have asked me for this. That you are in a great battle in your home. I tell you that I am your God. Trust. Wait. Because the blessing of your home I will concede to you. Church praise. Because my blessing I have given you tonight. This morning in your presence. Confirm, O Lord, near your word. We ask that you bless our children, uh, intermediates, and our adolescent. Bless them and keep them from all the danger. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we say that through the blood of Jesus and your Holy Father, the eternal blessings of the Holy Spirit be with us, with this people, now and forever. Amen. Brethren, the service is now over. You remind the brethren of the seminar that we will be having to be preparing for the seminar and also the service later tonight at 7.30 that the Lord can reveal and we can be part of one more service of glorification to all the peace of the Lord.